Today we're going to discuss um, violence. Um, obviously, this is something that hopefully is not a part of your life, but um, it's something that anyone can run into at any point in time. And certainly we all have disagreements with other people. And so we want to make sure we have the skills to recognize when a situation may be um, headed towards violence and how we can um, hopefully prevent um, violence from occurring. And if some violence does occur, um, why it's a bad idea to respond with more violence. So, what you can do to avoid dangerous situations are recognizing when things are out of control. So whether you're directly involved in the conflict, if you're not directly involved in the conflict, um, you know, then just leave if you can. Obviously, that's um, uh, the best thing. But, you know, usually you can recognize because usually violence doesn't just occur out of nowhere. Usually something's it's been building up. The conflict has been building up. It's escalating. And so you can recognize um, that there's a dangerous situation. Um, and some some things that may show you that it may move into violence is someone losing control of their anger. Um, the tone and volume of their voice may change because they're out of control. Um, Nonverbal non signs that you may see include clenching their fists, um, clenching their teeth, becoming very red in the face, and narrowing their eyes at someone. Um, so if um, if things do appear to be getting out of control, do what you can to help calm them down. Um, if you're directly involved, try to calm yourself down. Try to, you know, see if you can arrange to, you know, meet with them the next day or something like that when you both have had a chance to calm down. Try to be respectful to the other person um, and try not to do, any, do or say anything that's going to make the situation um, worse. If you're, uh, maybe it's a friend that's involved and not you, you, you know, try to do those things to help them calm down, try to get their attention, you know, break that immediate interaction between them, um, you know, try to catch their eye and, and um, sometimes with a touch or something like that, you can try to get their attention away from the conflict and then, you know, maybe direct them to, hey, you know, let's leave, let's talk about this tomorrow, um, things like that. So, um, you know, try to be um, a person of reason and not someone who's making the situation worse. Don't, you know, egg on the people who are um, in the conflict. Um, you know, like I said, if if it appears that it, the violence is going to occur, leave if you can. Um, and um, if you're not uh, directly involved, you know, just get out of there and get the people you're responsible for out of there before any violence does occur. Um, if necessary, you know, and you and you can notify people in uh, positions of responsibility that can maybe come in and um, keep things from happening. Um, that you know, would be uh, really serious. Um, some uh, some alternatives that you can offer um, if things are getting out of control are, um, you know, just like I said, you know, getting together at another time when everyone's calmer um, to, um, to discuss things. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that um, maybe you're not in a situation that's getting out of control, but you're someone makes some comment to you or in some other way you become aware that someone is planning a violent act. So maybe they've been in a conflict with someone and um, it's built up to the point that they are planning some type of violence against someone else. And, you know, the other person may be totally unaware. Um, it's not it's not that that this is a mutual, you know, agreement that they're going to fight or something like that, but rather that someone um, has decided to just plan um, an attack. And if that happens, um, by all means, notify people in authority that um, because innocent people, um, you know, are very likely to get hurt in a situation like this. And, um, and hopefully the person who's planning this can get help um, to deal with their feelings. Um, the um, most schools have um, some type of um, hotline or something like that that you can call. You can always call the police. Most schools also have usually some kind of a security or police on 
site that you could go talk to. So, um, so they're, and always just trusted friends, you know, parents, you know, if you're not sure what to do, tell your parent, they can help you figure it out or tell a teacher, they can help you figure it out. Uh, so do, you know, if you're aware of anything, by all means, don't keep it to yourself. You want to let people know um, so that things can be, you know, violence can be avoided. Um, unfortunately, though, violence does occur. And if a violent act occurs against you, um, you responding with no, more violence usually just keeps this cycle happening. You know, someone, um, you know, there's a lot of um, drive-by shootings that occur. And usually someone knows who's responsible. So someone drives by somebody's house and, you know, as they're going by, you know, shoots it up. Well, someone there knows who that probably was or ha thinks they know who it was. So then they go and drive by somebody else's house and shoots it up. And meanwhile, innocent children and adults who really aren't directly involved in this conflict end up getting hit by the gunfire. And um, so this isn't an appropriate way to deal with any kind of conflict. They, um, and so, you know, you don't wanna just keep escalating any violence. Um, that occurs against you. I know that can be very difficult, um, you know, when particularly if a friend or a loved one is injured, you, you know, people want revenge. They want some type of, um, you know, they want to get even or show these people that, you know, they're better than them, they're tougher than them, whatever. But, you know, it really doesn't solve anything. You're putting yourself at risk and you're putting, um, continuing to put your loved ones at risk for more violence. Um, so, um, you know, unless you're directly being attacked and the only way to protect yourself is, you know, to respond with some type of, of violence at that immediate time, um, the best thing to do is um, not continue this cycle, but try to break that um, cycle. Um, I know in some communities it can be difficult to work with the police, but every police has a they have anonymous hotlines, again, that you can call. You don't have to give your name. Um, let them know what's going on. Let them know if you think someone has um, committed a crime or a violent act. And, um, and you know, this can be difficult to do to break, you know, to go against community, um, you know, what's expected, seems to be expected of you among your um, friends and things like that. But it's so much better than seeing a friend or a loved one um, get injured or killed by ceaseless violence. So, um, so, you know, you need to think about those risks and what's the responsible thing to do, whether to, you know, continue with the violence or try to um, uh, break that cycle. So um, those are some thoughts um, about violence. Thank you.